Hi guys, this is Dr. Suthar from Doctor to Help. For those who don't know me, I'm an internal medicine doctor, board certified, practicing in Texas on telemedicine. Hope you're all doing great wherever you are. And for those who don't know me also, this channel was started on December 13th to provide free medical education. Today we're gonna to talk about COVID-19, myth versus truth. Let's talk about it. Does vaccine, COVID-19 vaccine or any vaccine kills more people than the disease itself? I think by now everybody knows that's not true, right? But what about the incidents in Norway? 23 people died, oh my goodness, after getting the vaccine. So a lot of roars has been going on all over social media. Even my doctor friends has been talking, those people were subjected to a clinical trial. It is unethical. Well, remember, this vaccine trial was already done and it was approved. And remember, when a vaccine trial is done, it is done by people who sign up voluntarily, voluntarily for the study. So I don't think a hospice patient or a palliative care patient will really come and sign up for that study, don't you think? So we asked Norway what happened. We wanted more clarification. We started digging. What we found out that in Norway, highly developed country, they have some safety precaution. Any death after a new vaccine has been rolled out is recorded. So they recorded 23 deaths after the vaccine was rolled out. So we tried to find out who are these patients. These are patients all over the country, all across the country, not in one or two single nursing homes. It is all across the country. And it was found they were elderly, very frail patients. Some of them were hospice or palliative care patient, the youngest age being 81 years old. Some of them had only a few weeks to months to live. Obviously, this is not a general population. At that time, only that age group was allowed to get the vaccine. To note, the authority also mentioned that they have, on average, 400 deaths every week all across Norway in this population in the nursing home. So while this news has come out, the role of the vaccine is speculative. It is not a fact. No relation has been proven. All right, let's talk about USA. Pfizer vaccine was given out to millions of people in USA. There was only 11 reaction out of after million doses. Only 11 reaction, that is nothing. And those people were treated and they were healthy. Nobody had a ad big adverse reaction. Remember, when you take a flu vaccine, you will have same similar symptoms and you get better. None of them are lethal. So let's talk about vaccines. All the vaccines that we are having right now in the that has been approved is Pfizer as well as Moderna. And we also know about AstraZeneca. What are the common things about these vaccines? Pfizer and Moderna is done, was made from messenger RNA. This messenger RNA was made from the virus that was cut off in bits and pieces and only a tiny little part was introduced to a human body into after it was inoculated in the vaccine. So this thing cannot hurt people, cannot cause COVID-19. That nuclear material, the body recognizes as foreign and produces antibody. Now what happens when you have the same individual after two weeks if they get exposed to COVID-19? Remember, our body has an immune system too. Without vaccination, when an intruder goes into our body like a virus or a bacteria, our immune system recognizes it as foreign and starts activation of soldiers. Those are the, the antibodies. But this takes time. And our body may not be strong enough to fight those viruses before it succumbs to it. But when a vaccine is given, those antibodies are produced. It usually takes about one to two weeks before immunity is, is obtained. What happens when this person is, a, is exposed to COVID-19? Your body has memory cells and they remember from the vaccine that this is not the right 
material to be in my body. What they do, they activate millions of antibodies and they come, they fight the virus and they kill it. That's how vaccines work. Remember measles vaccine before 1963? About 250,000 babies, children were dying every year. Now it's about 300 with vaccination. So yes, vaccine does save lives. So we should all get the vaccine. The second thing, vaccine should not be trusted, myth versus truth, because these vaccines were made in a very short time. How short a time? Usually the vaccines are made over several years. These vaccines were made less than a year. How can we trust it? Should we trust it? Yes, no? Absolutely, I can understand your question. I can understand your concern. But remember, why did vaccines in previous time take so many years to develop? Do you think technology has, a, has something to do with it? Think about this. We are at an age where we are making electric vehicles. We are making spaceships to take passengers to moon. So science has advanced so far. And when there is a crisis and the whole world economy is crashing, what happens? All the governments come together, billions of dollars have been thrown in, and vaccines were made from information exchanged by everybody. That's what happens when money is involved. Well, that's a good thing for us. Guess what? Who paid for all these billions of dollars? You and I did from our tax money. If we don't take the vaccine after paying for it, it doesn't seem logical after all the things I just told you, right? So please understand that yes, there is questions, but these vaccines were made for almost a year of trial since it had, but let me also tell you that our scientists has been working on these vaccines for even longer than that. For one example, Oxford University has been working on a vaccine against disease X, which is a virus that causes pandemic, and it has been going on for years. So scientists has been working on it gradually over time. This is when they all came together and worked together and found a solution. Now, I want to end with good news, all right? Right now, we have two vaccines. And with the new administration coming in, the plan is to roll out the vaccine sooner. They're going to get FEMA activated. They're going to help out. They're going to get more healthcare providers. And they're also going to provide more money into education. People need to learn these things. That's the whole point of today's discussion, right? So we have another vaccine that's coming out. And this is from Johnson & Johnson. It is we are hoping it's going to be a game changer. Do you know why? Because so far, the phase one and phase two trial just ended and they just gave the report last week. And it showed that about um, on day 29, about 90% cases were effective to produce antibody. By day 59, it was 100%. And guess what? You need only one dose. This next phase of the trial, we are hoping we'll get that result in one to two weeks. We are hoping we'll get approval in America for both AstraZeneca as well as J&J by February. If that happens, well and good, we'll have four vaccines to work with. Now, talking about herd immunity. Yes, I know everybody is afraid about the UK variant and now we have a US variant. I also want to tell you two other variants are available are out there. One is a South African variant and there is a Brazilian variant. Pfizer has released information last week stating that their vaccine would be effective against the UK variant. So that is good news. All right. Now we still don't have enough information about the South African one. I know the UK variant already had 17 mutations. The South African variant has not been found in the United States yet. We are looking for it. We have also found two other different variants, US variants, in America. Yes, the bad news is they are more infective. Also, they can transmit to children as well. Before, we used to see, we saw about 
just over 2 million children was affected in America. Now it's going to be even more. So that is alarming. By Scott Gottlieb, the former, Dr. Scott Gottlieb, the former FDA chief, state that by March, the UK variant may become the predominant one in America. But it, our vaccines are effective. So let's see what happens. Um, also, I have done some study on Seema Yasmi. She is from Stanford's School of Education. Um, you can see, according to her, it will take at least 70 to 75% vaccination before we can reach herd immunity in United States. So that would be our target to get herd immunity done. Those who cannot get vaccination, the only way we can protect them is to get herd immunity. What that, that means is that people who are vaccinated cannot be infected. We'll surround those people who are not vaccinated and not protected and protect them. The virus cannot go in through that boundary. And I'll give an example here for that. So these are all, I know it is a lot of information. I know that by the time we get the pandemic under control and we'll have enough herd immunity, it's probably May 1st. But guess what? The old rule still works. Wearing a mask, washing your hands, keeping isolation. Keep doing it until you get the vaccine and even after you get the vaccine. And remember, after you get the vaccine, it takes two weeks to get the antibody production. All right, and you still need a booster dose to get a full immunity. So remember all those. If you have any questions, feel free to reach me on Facebook. I am active. You can text me any questions. You can also re put a comment in and I will reach you out and answer all questions you have. I promise. It may take some time, but I promise I'll do that. I have not taken a single day off since February, since the COVID-19 was announced. I see 30 to 50 patients, sometimes more, every day. And on top of it, I'm doing this educational channel to reach out to people. We all need to come together, do many sacrifices, but together we can defeat this pandemic. Let's do it together, okay? Take care, be safe, take care.